All right, he is back. There he is, the one and only Paul Felder. Paul, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you guys? I'm doing. Did you get a call right as I was introducing you? Is that what happened? No, I, I'm just sitting here touching my screen and messing everything up by accident, and then trying to go back in. Oh, no worries. Well, it, so. you look great. <laughs> you look great physically. How are you feeling after that fight nine days later? Oh man, uh, it, it's been a it's been a good recovery. <laughs> um, obviously, I had to stay in Auckland for a few extra days to have my my eye looked at. Uh, you know, there was a couple little fractures in the orbital, and they always want to be safe to, before they send you off flying. You know, twenty hours, twenty plus hours, whatever it is, to get back to Philadelphia. Uh, my leg is still really sore, but that's the swelling is healing up there. And uh, the other crazy thing was I ended up getting rhabdo from that fight. What is that? I don't know if you know what that is. It's a condition where your your muscles begin to actually break down and leak into your bloodstream, producing I think more myoglobin, and it, it wears on your kidneys, and it turns your urine basically like Coca-Cola color. Oh, no. So, yeah, so I went to the hospital for all that other stuff, uh, and I went and you know, I had to take a pee at the hospital before I sat there for hours, and uh, I was like, oh, that's not good. And I knew what it was right away. I'd heard about this disorder from, like, CrossFit athletes and things like that, guys that just kind of push it to the limit. And yeah, so I had to stay a little longer to make sure my, my kidneys were uh, oh my functioning properly. Has that ever happened to you before? You know what? It's happened a couple times where I thought I was peeing blood from, like, body shots. But I, I'm starting to think maybe I'm just pushing it and with the weight cut and then rehydrating and then pushing it again. You know, maybe it's just been taking its toll on the old, uh, the old kidneys. So now when you go to the, the restroom, does the same thing still happen or is that going? No, 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 no. No, it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, okay. They basically just fl flush your system, flush your kidneys. Uh, so they gave me like five five bags of IV, all of course administered in a hospital and under the uh, watchful eye of you know USADA knows what's going on. So yes, 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 of course. Uh, but yeah, it's just God, you know, one of these days I'm gonna fight and not, uh, or maybe not, and uh, not end up in the ER. Yeah, no, I I mean the the fight was incredible and the shots that you took and the heart that you displayed was amazing. I'm wondering how many how many donuts have you had since the fight. <laughs> So, so Ian Larios, who's uh, my nutritionist, and does all my weight cuts. He showed up with my my teammate who was with me. Showed up and brought like three uh, dozen Krispy Kreme donuts to oh the hospital that I was staying at. <laughs> so by the next day, I, I probably had already had about fourteen Krispy Kreme donuts, and I, today. <sighs> I was going to be good today. It was Monday. I was like, oh, I'm going to get back on the trying to eat mostly healthy. I had six filled donuts. This, this <laughs> six donuts just today, and it's 2.30 Eastern time. To the face. Oh, to the face. Look at that. Well done. Well and done. my metabolism is emerging still, but it's not going to last. It's not going to last much longer, bro. I can tell you right now. I can feel it starting to swell up in my blood. I got to start working out again. Could you even get out of bed? Yeah, I just went for a two mile walk before I took this oh, call with you. Well done. Well done. Uh, have you rewatched the fight? But, yeah. I did. I watched it once. And what do you I think? I watched it once on my, on my phone. I, I, I think I won the fight. How'd you score it? I think it was, I, I scored it three rounds, two, four, and five to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can argue other rounds, I thought. But you can also argue rounds for, for, for Dan. It depends on how you're watching it, what you're scoring. I had that close fight with Edson, man. I, I, I feel I won the fight. I feel like I went in there into enemy territory and did what I needed to do. I really feel like I, if that's in Vegas or, God forbid, Philadelphia, I, I, I think I walk with that decision every time. Well, one of the hot topics this past month, as you know, is open scoring. In a situation like this, so close, do you wish there was open scoring? Yeah, I do. So I, I, I can know how hard I really got to go out there. And uh, but I don't think it would have really mattered. The one it was one judge that gave the judge that gave him round five. They were all over the place. These guys. Uh, but one of them, two of them gave him a five to me. And I think if I'd gotten that third judge to also agree that I won five, I'd have won the fight. And I went in there round five as if I needed to knock him out anyway. So I don't think that would have really changed too much. I went into that final round like I got a. 
I got to put a stamp on this. And then obviously he got that, that takedown at the end of the fight. But I, I remember in my head saying, I'm not going to let him just have this takedown no matter how much time is left. Because if I can just freaking get back up to my feet and show these people that I even though I think I had that round in the bag and there was not much time left, even on my back, I was elbowing and trying to get back up to my feet and then even throwing back elbows. So I really thought I, 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 you know, I put a stamp on it and let the judges know I won, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and, and cry about it. That's not why I talked about retirement. You know, it's, it's all the other things that are going on. It's just, and, and we'll get to that in a second, but I just want to say, as I've repeated a million times over the past two weeks or so, a takedown shouldn't score you points. A takedown per the new unified rules is just a change of position if you do nothing with it. So if you take someone down and they pop back up as you did, that should not be the deciding factor. And it drives me nuts when people say he stole the round with the takedown. No, that's not how this yeah. works. So, I, But I actually think in this case, it did work against you. Yeah, I agree. I think you're right. I think that is what ultimately made that judge give him round five uh, instead of me. And, uh, you know, it's, ri it's ridiculous. But again, you know, something's got to be figured out. It's not just me and Dan. You know, the me and Edson fight scores were all over the place. We just saw recently there's been some scores that are just don't even make sense. Clearly another fighter won and they give it to another guy. Judges are getting caught looking at their cell phones and, and not watching the action. So uh, this is just another example of, of you know, proving that we need to get some things more concrete on how we're going to break down the criteria of what wins the fight. So the big question now is nine days later, have you made a decision about your future? You know, it's, I got, I got a little emotional on there and I really have been thinking about like how many more do I have left? I have not been thinking about hanging the gloves up during training camp or thinking that I'm out of contention for really making a run for this division. But it's been on my mind at 35. I'm turning 36 in April. My, my daughter is getting a lot older. She's realizing when I'm gone and, and missing me a lot more. But uh, I, I think at this point, it's safe to say I'm only coming back for things that really uh, entice me, man. Things that are going to make me train the way I did for this fight. Five round fights, big, huge uh, matchups with somebody that excite me. Other than that, I'll, I'll just do commentary and wait for that matchup. But I talked to Sean Shelby and, you know, they said some nice things to me. They didn't push me one way or the other whatsoever. They just uh, kind of congratulated me on a crazy fight and said that, you know, we're going to be calling you and we hope you answer. So in your heart of hearts, do you think you fought your last fight? No. What is that fight that you think gets you back? Yeah, well, obviously, if something were to happen to, to one of these guys in the top five and they can't match up the way the UFC wants them to match up, uh, there's been some talk of uh, Ally Aquinta wanting to fight me. And, uh, you know, you give me a five-rounder with him and, and a big fight night or a rematch with Hooker, which will never happen. And um, But obviously, that's something I would take to, to, to get that one back. Um, any of the top five, Ally Aquinta is a fun fight just because that fight was supposed to happen like three different times and it never quite did. And he's mentioned he wants it, but it's got to, it would have to be some main event somewhere for me to even want to do that. Mm. I, you know what I mean? Like I'm not coming back for, you know, the last fight on the prelims or even like the second fight of a pay-per-view. I, I nah. And it's nothing against them. It's not saying I deserve all these extra things. It's just to go through what I go through and put myself through in training. And then you see how, I push myself in the fight. You can't deny that anymore, that when I show up, I'm going to put on a goddamn show for everybody, including the UFC. So I just feel like I deserve to be put in the spots that uh, that I'm warranted. And I feel like after that main event, proving that I can that I can promote it, that I can hype it up, and then I can execute, that I should only be getting, you know, exciting ma matchups from, from here on out. When you mention the hooker rematch, why do you say that'll never happen? But just because I feel like, you know, he, he technically won the fight. I feel like it was close enough where, I, I'm, again, I'm not complaining about this decision. I'm not sitting here and, and taking anything away from that guy. We shared something very special in there for five rounds, and he was just as gritty as I was. But I feel like he's going to take that and try to fight Poirier, or he's going to fight somebody above him. And I feel like 
that's not a bad thing. That's meant to happen. You know what I mean? If that was my case, somebody said to me, would you want to rematch with Dan if you had gotten that decision based on that same exact fight? And hell no. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, I, if I'm walking away with my hand raised and I got that dub, I'm trying to fight Poirier or Gaethje too. Right. That, that is fair. And I, and I appreciate that perspective. Did you know that you were going to do that? Like I, I saw right as the the judge's decision was announced, you started to, you know, take the tape off the gloves. And, and for a second, I was like, oh, no. And then they went away from you and then they came back and, and then you did what you did. Was that something you were thinking about or was it just like was the first time that that crossed your mind in that moment? You hadn't been thinking about that all camp long. You know, I'm a pretty dramatic. Uh, <laughs> Well, you're an actor, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. So, you know, I kind of always think about that moment, just as I always think about what having the belt put around my waist would be like and, and taking that back to Philly or fighting, you know, at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia uh, and doing or bringing the belt to the Eagles, you know, stadium at the link and, and hanging out. With I, I fantasize about all these things and retirement's just another one of them. And it's not in any bad way. I, I read some reporter saying, like, if he's even mentioning off the tip of his tongue that he's going to retire, he should do it. I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of BS. That doesn't really make sense because I think about that since I first fought my pro fight and I was like, why the hell? I think about it every time I'm backstage. I say to every one of my corner men over and over again, why the f are we here? You know, you've heard it a million times now. Guys are being more honest about what goes on backstage with us and how nerve wracking it is and this is the torture we put ourselves through waiting in those locker rooms. So, yeah, it's crossed my mind. And, I, you know, that moment almost seemed right. But, nah, I, I still, I think I got a lot more left in me physically, man. I'm already recovering from the, from one of the hardest battles of my life. And it, it, it was, it's addictive, man. That, that five rounds, that main event, I liked it. I liked being on the poster. I liked it being about me and him and, and I'm, you know, the USA versus New Zealand over there was uh yeah look at that look at that foot yeah oh my god any Ooh, surgery no uh, I get the final results results on my eye um I just got the uh, cat scan done again today um I should be fine wow that is amazing by the way what what happened in this scene here what did you guys talk about? what a great photo this is <laughs> legendary stuff what did you guys talk about I, I knew he was behind me so I just kept yelling Dan. Yeah, we got to get a picture. And he was beyond respectful and cool. We sat there, we chatted for a little bit, and just kind of looked at each other for a while there, man. Like, yo, we just we just did something pretty special, brother. You know what I mean? And I said, hey, I'm sorry. You know, I really didn't mean anything disrespectful to your family whatsoever. Uh, it wasn't ever about that. But, again, I said it before the fight. It was a fight. We were hyping it. Sometimes we get a little mad at each other. We're going to fist fight. I knew me and Dan were going to put on a show like that, whether we liked each other or didn't like each other. But it did add to the drama, you know, before the weigh-ins, when they were mentioning me talking about his name and him getting all heated, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I get to face the music, you know what I mean? Here we are. And uh, God damn, it was, man, that walkout, I don't know if you guys saw Brian Butler poster. Yeah. From behind that man. <laughs> Gives me chills coming out to Born in the USA and, uh, God, that, that's why it would be tough to retire, man. I, I'm sitting here smiling, thinking about, even though my body was beat to crap from that fight, it, man, going into the fourth and fifth round when Duke's like, this is, this is it. These are championship rounds right now. I'm like, whew, you talk about it. You know, it's easy to talk about these five rounders and, hey, I'm in shape for five rounds. Yeah, we see a lot of guys say that, right? But right. I showed up in shape for five rounds. Yeah, no, it was incredible. Um, and just the way you're speaking about it, like you can't walk away now, right? You can't walk away like that. Just you don't seem like a guy who's done. Just the way you're speaking. Look at your smile. You're just like you love this. <laughs> <laughs> I do love it, man. Of course I do. But you know what I hate? I hate coming home with headaches and, and broken faces and swollen legs. But my daughter's been great. You know, we've all been just hanging out, eating donuts, and uh, you know, I let her take off some days from school this week. So it's I, I call it the week of debauchery, Ariel. The first <laughs> week after after the fight, I can do whatever I want calorie wise, right? So I have been like, for example, you want to hear a little bit Please. about yesterday before yes. I get off of here? Oh yes, I love it. All right. So I still had some box of those Tim Tams, those biscuits, the chocolate covered biscuits they have over there, the Tim Tam slams and 
You hear about these? Yes, things? yes, yes. I probably had about a box and a half of those yesterday. <laughs> An entire giant Kit Kat, like a big, big one from over there that I froze and brought over with me. Uh, probably most of a pint of uh, gelato, uh, a grilled cheese at like 12 o'clock at night, <laughs> uh, homemade macaroni and cheese that my mom made for me. Oh, yes. Uh, we went to, I went to Federal Donuts in the morning. We, I probably ate about five donuts there. They're like cake donuts. And I split, uh, split a chicken sandwich, fried chicken sandwich, and then probably a whole bunch of Hershey Kisses and some other stuff throughout the day. Well deserved. Well deserved. That's impressive. I wonder if it would That's be easy. That's stopping soon. It's stopping soon. Hey. And I don't do encourage you. any of you fighters out there to binge the way. Do that you, man? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Live your best life. I wonder if it would be easier on you. I know you love it over there at, at Rufus Sport, but if you could train in Philadelphia, do you think that would take some pressure off of you and you wouldn't miss your, your daughter well, as much? Well, it has gotten easier, right? I, I do have a team here now. I'm back with Daniel Gracie and. Uh, Coach John uh, and Jonathan Webb as well. Like I have Tom Brady is you know one of my main teammates here. Jonathan Webb. We got Pat Sabatini. A bunch of really good uh, guys that are just breaking into the UFC or haven't gotten there yet. But it's uh, I think part of it is me getting away and being isolated and being being old school about you know how boxers used to go away for their training camps and kind of isolate themselves up in you know a cabin and just you're just there for training. It's just I did a long one this time because it was my first five rounder, so I didn't want to really mess around with it. So I did a full eight weeks away. So that was a little tough, but I think it's so important, man. I think, uh, you know, I only got a couple more years left max, so it's something we're all going to have to deal with until I decide uh, it's not how I want to make money anymore. And, and if you stop going to Rufus Sport, that means we, we don't get the Bilal Muhammad videos of uh, him imitating yeah, you, and well, those are just tremendous, right? You have to love those, right? Oh, God. The first one that I saw, I wasn't ready for it. And uh, my teammate and boy, Craig Eckelberg, was like, yo, have you seen what Bilal put on uh, Twitter or Instagram? <laughs> I was like, I got all serious for a second. Like, oh, like, well, what happened? Like, what did he say? I went on, and it was him doing his first Pauly Paul uh, impression. <laughs> I was literally uh, almost peed my pants laughing out loud at that one. Tremendous. Uh, you're you're going to be joining us in Las Vegas for 248. Yeah, yeah. I, how uh, the hell are you doing that? I have no idea why, how you're doing this, but apparently you're an analyst, so I wanted to mention that as well. I'm ready. I'm you know I'm excited <laughs> for this card. I'm excited to I'm excited to work. Wait, Eric, you got to realize, like I told you, the week of debauchery will turn into let's be honest, two or three weeks of sure. debauchery because I've got I've got Vegas with you guys on the desk, and then I'm working color with. Uh, my British compadres over over for the London card as well, and you know Duke will be there working with Tyrant. So I, just, I won't be fighting anytime soon at 155. That, I, that okay. I <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you're doing okay. You're in good spirits, and that you have some fighting left in you. Uh, again, great performance. I thought you won ever so slightly. I know how these things go. You're handling like like the true pro with all class as you usually do. And I told you, right? I told you at the Edson fight that I would handle this yep. like a man. Yep. Yep. There you go. Paul, I, I appreciate cried. it. And I will see you in Las Vegas. I'll see you soon, sir. Thanks for having me on. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.